Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with me, Essek Hydra. Apologies for the hiatus. I've had a little spot of laryngitis last week and my throat has finally gotten to a point where I'm able to speak again fairly comfortably. So uh, let's get through a, another replay. It's going to be me playing as the, the fishy fleet, the town merchants, against uh, an opponent I've played a few times. Uh, this was actually recorded yesterday. Now, uh, this game in particular, I think, a pretty decent showcase. So uh, let's get the show on the road. So having a look at the map, Map. There obviously is a fair few gas clouds scattered around, but mainly on the peripheries of the map, so I won't be able to make good use of those. Against the Orc Fleet, it's uh, not 100% sure if you're ever going to be against something like a light cruiser spam or perhaps the carrier fleet, which is seeming to be more and more popular these, these days, but uh, you kind of have to be prepared to play against both. Brace for impact, you can see me hovering over there and placing ordnance defensively if you are against the carrier fleet, a pretty good idea. Generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, if the enemy's got somewhere between six and nine uh, ships in total, you're against a carrier fleet. If they've got something like 12 to 15, well, you could be pretty sure it's a light cruiser spam. So I'm guessing at the moment this is probably going to be a fairly ordnance heavy orky fleet. So we've got one of our little escorts heading over to the middle point to try and contest that nice and sharpish. And we're going to send the rest of the fish over toward the middle of the map we have a fair bit of coverage there from the neighbouring asteroid fields which we can use to hopefully sort of kite him around, that being the aim at least, assuming he hasn't got the uh, ability to move through them freely. And of course this is on the beta server where you have to set stances once the game has started, you can no longer do so during the, the pre-game, so now you get to see all of the enemy starting positions, which I think is actually... An interesting change, it's just a little bit frustrating to get used to. Uh, it's not inherently bad, it means that the enemy gets a full uh, a full view of your fleet, although uh, I guess from a cannon perspective, why on earth a, a, a unit starts uh, without a stance is a little bit odd, but hey, there you go, maybe there's some, uh, some arguments for why you can't go silent running for the whole of your journeys. So, as predicted, the there is one carrier over there. We can see the grav area. gun still not invisible yet on the flagship, so that's something that still needs to be addressed. And there comes the carrier wave. Now, he sent those out towards my little uh, trooper over here, and that's okay. We're going to wait for them to come a little bit closer, and then what we can do is use this uh, happy little trooper to kite them. What we need to be careful of, though, is to make sure we don't go out of visual range, because I actually don't want to reset them. I have two waves of defensive ordnance, and they should be enough, even against the unit of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, so it's not actually the typical orc carrier fleet we're playing against. It's a, a little bit of a modified one with some, uh, it seems some slightly lower tiers, uh, but a greater quantity in total. So this will be interesting to play against, but I have two waves that are currently acting as uh, as sort of defensive ordnance, and they should perform pretty well against these orc fighters. So you can see the amount of stacks that I've got there. A real big cluster, but looking pretty good for me. Now we can obviously move the rest of our units up and across. He has a couple of escorts which are sort of revealed to me as such. And it might be an idea once they have moved further away from the gas clouds to send oh, yes, in sir. just a double bomber squad that should be able to take them down. Let's get a few eyes on. Looks like missiles are coming, so a small change of direction here just to dodge out the way of the missiles for free. Uh, might as well just avoid them rather than relying on trying to sort of shoot them down. Does look like fighters are going to engage on my fighters again. That's fine. Nope, looks like maybe they're just going over to kill out the uh, torpedoes. So defensive fighters really uh, getting their getting their value. Value here. Looks like we might take a missile. Nope, we're okay, we're okay. So he is getting fairly close as well, but you can see our uh, our rail guns are doing a little bit of damage. We're going to keep the defensive ordnance here up. Just simply is uh, essential to have these torpedoes and all of this taken down. It really does nullify a fleet if you play this defensively. And it's, uh, it's a world of difference when you play defensively compared to offensively. If you play offensively, what you'll find is he, you will lose uh, because he will have a double stack of ordnance assuming he's playing defensively. If you both play offensively then it's just a rock paper scissors as to who sends them out, uh, who has more and, and all of that thing. Oh here we go, a little, uh, what is this over here, a savage? I can't quite tell the uh, tell the orc escorts apart yet uh, but hopefully going to try and take that down slowly. They're pretty robust things but they've only got a high armour from the frontal range so uh, as you can see my weapon damage severely 
lacking. We're taking one boarding action here, four stacks. We could do call to arms. It, it might be worth doing. We've done it just before the first stack ticks down. And uh, we're just going to do that. And you can see it's only taking down one troop. So it's halving the damage, or the troop damage rather, that's coming out from there. So we're sending out a bomber wave. Uh, we have enough fighters already here that I think that should be okay. And we do have a couple of missiles that we can also send out to. Just being very careful to micro these properly because things could go badly if we don't. It does seem... Oh dear. Uh, things have kind of gotten a little bit out of hand here now. Not enough fighters on my part. Using the bombers instead of the fighters was perhaps a little bit of a mistake. Uh, perhaps I should have waited for one more squadron of fighters to be taken out first. But hey, we're still alive. And thanks to our uh, our thrusters, we are getting out of there. Now, of course, we don't have the call to arms active anymore. So our main ship is losing quite a lot of stuff. It would probably be a good idea now to use a couple of my other ships to... Ah, there we go. Uh, to do a transfer. So basically sticking some more units back on my main ship. Try and prevent it going down a tier, which will just well keep it alive a little bit longer and uh, now it's back to kiting really back to kiting as you can see we've not done a huge amount of damage to uh, all of these ships but we've we spread out damage across the top three of them fairly well uh, fairly well indeed we do also have the railgun which has not yet seen a use which is a little bit embarrassing on my part Hopefully that will be put to good use because the 300 damage, or is it 400 that it does? It's quite a much, let's call it 300 for now because I'm not quite sure, uh, is, is a very large contribution to, uh, to damage output. If you get a couple of these off on one of these smaller ships, it will do some real damage. There you go, let's try one here, see how it does. That's a fairly notable chunk. And let's get some bombers off too. So it does seem that our main flagship has finally mutinied and with a destroyed deck we have no choice. Ah, maybe our deck isn't actually destroyed. But uh, for those of you that might not know this, when your deck is destroyed you can't execute. It does seem we have a couple of ships running around on the periphery here, not actually contributing anything at all. So that's something, a little bit of a blunder on my part. And it does seem that we might have some missiles from the bottom unit going into mine. No, nope, fortunately it was out of ammo. Hopefully these will hit. Nope, he's going to boost straight past them. Uh, fortunately though, we're going to not look at that and to hide it. It's actually, if, if you can thrust forward with a, with a good timing, you can avoid those, uh, those missiles. But they are circling around to go in the butt. And uh, quite a few hits there. Pretty, pretty tasty, although it does seem that quite a few of them actually hit me. Uh, either that or that, either that or that ram was just particularly spicy. So that's another unit gone and uh, pretty poor micro from myself not managing to dodge that. Uh, more fighters coming in, things are looking a little bit bleak and it does seem that all of my fighter waves have been used. No, they're boarding torpedoes. Drats. So it's time to dodge and uh, get the hell out of there. So managed to board me with two but we did shoot some of the others down. We can slow down one unit here and now we can do the kiting game. So now he's out of fighters by the looks of it. He's moving on to boarding torpedoes, but we still have a total of 22 turrets here, which against a unit like this is, is fairly adequate in order, to, uh, in order to take them down. And I think we should be able to mow them down before they make it. Yep, another two squads of two on their way over and those should be fairly straightforward to take down too. All missiles, one's going to take a hit, that's a boarding torpedo too. And uh, well, we do have a bit of map control, but we're pretty far behind by now. I haven't really been prioritising um, total map dominance, which I, I probably could have with my escorts a little bit more efficiently. But mainly the point lead he has right now, I think, is due to just simply killing more units. Now some fairly low mass and low health units coming my way. Ramming them in the front is, is not as efficient, well, simply because they have pretty decent frontal armor but uh, oh a call to arms over here and a pretty unhealthy looking unit we can send the bombs off because we are in um, very close proximity right now send the missiles too they're going to go circling around and chances are they'll never even manage to hit uh, we'll do some other stuff too but I used all of my thruster on that unit so that's looking pretty bleak too it's a bit of a sloppy game by me some some pretty uh, pr some pretty big blunders uh, and as you can see struggling a lot to get the damage off and I would state that these these ships are fairly weak uh, the missiles aren't terrible the trouble is is their damage is mainly broadside and well broadside focus damage when you're not someone like the Imperial Navy that focuses on getting in someone's face 
can be a little bit risky and a little bit difficult to use. Right, perfect. We managed to go back onto uh, Brace for Impact, so we should be able to take these down. That's going to be really close. So what we did there just at the end is turn the thruster off for a second and then turn it back on again. That way he wasn't able to get the stacks. Uh, that way I was able to recharge a small amount of the thruster. So it does seem like we're very, very slowly climbing back up in terms of points, but this is pretty close. Uh, and it's oh fortunately the big red button just ran out before it got to me that would have hurt quite a lot speed is factored into ramming damage so if you do get rammed by an orc using big red button it's going to hurt a lot now it does seem i've got the engine turned off for this unit down there and i hadn't quite realized that so that's a little bit of a blunder on my part but now we can initiate the counter rams he's fairly spread out and this is something we might be able to use to our to our benefit there's one cheeky ram and we're going to hit him with the uh, the fish flap, I think, in a second. There we go. Spin it round and do it again. There we go. A few nudges sometimes needed. Boarding torpedoes on the way again. A little bit of a, uh, a tail fin flap there to get him. And one more ram. This ship's really putting in some work here. I think uh, I think this this we should probably call it Rambo, but it's it's really got uh, got some uh, got some muscle to it. So, checking out the rest of the map, he still has a few light cruisers and his big beefy ship, which basically we've been ignoring till now. One of the comments I'll always see regarding uh, the Orc fleets is people will insist to me that you should always try and target the flagship. I actually don't always agree with this logic because I think it, it's, a, it's a gamble. You might take it down, you might not, and if you don't, you lose. Uh, that that's pretty much the, the gamble and i was not confident enough in my ordinance this game to take it down if i was a tower protector i might have been a little bit more uh, a little bit more confident in my ability to do so but with this fleet not quite so much now you see we are slowly whittling down his his remaining units the good thing about this flagship that he's bought is because it it's basically the the, the carrier centric unit it doesn't have much else going for it so it's not really contributing a lot of dacca all i need to do is run around and ignore it really and as long as I kill the ordnance which I've pretty much already done it's now not really posing too much of a threat we do need to be careful of this other ship here which is probably going to try and ram in the butt soon so need to be a little bit careful there that big red button's going to be coming off of cooldown but we can trust away into the distance it's, I really feel like you should we should have a, a game I, I'm not going to suggest it's a drinking game but the amount of times we use the word thrust I should really replace it with boost or something like that. It feels like it would be uh, a little bit more family friendly. Anyway, checking out the map, we are just about in the lead in terms of points, but uh, he does have an escort up there contesting the middle points. He has a unit on the far left side of the map. Not entirely sure what that's doing. Looks like it might have mutinied, but we'll find out soon enough. Uh, but he does still have a flagship and a light cruiser. Now, I think one thing that I would say on his part right now is abandoning the points is probably going to work against him in the in this aspect although that being said he will just sit there taking firepower from me if he doesn't but aha things could easily swing back in his favor he's just taken down an escort two escorts in fact with one ram beautiful play from my opponent well done to him and uh, the rest of my units are looking pretty weak so if he can decapture that central point and hold on to it I, he's still going to win uh, i can split up though and head to the peripheries with my other two aha a low ship has uh, has been spied uh, via my binoculars and I think what we're going to do is take that down instead that 100 points is probably going to be more valuable than decapping the point on the left now this this is actually probably one of the the main deciding moments of this game I have uh, fortunately broadsides on this ship and he only has front damage front facing damage so what this means is as well as him not having the ability to turn quickly is I can uh, dance the dance of the the tango de la dodge and uh, so far it's looking pretty good we can move away for a few seconds which is dicey but hey it worked it's fine one habit I'd encourage everyone to be in is to turn your camera away every now and again and you'll find out that quite often you don't have to sit there watching a unit indefinitely it will normally carry on doing the order and uh, oh there we go just managed to tickle it and it's down and that means that we still have that central point obviously we do have four here uh, but I think there there was a moment there where I was I was feeling a little dicey looking at the map now I actually have four points in total I think it probably wasn't quite as close as I was uh, anticipating but points still pretty close and there are a few low units that I have so it's looking pretty unlikely that he's going to be able to claw this back, especially as we've just taken down another unit. But I do think that was a great game and a really good fun one to play. And it does seem that... Oh, a unit down in the bottom left. I don't know exactly what it was doing. Maybe it was lost to the warp. 
maybe it was lost to the warp, but that definitely could have had a go at recapturing um, earlier on. And I think having that uh, having a, that contesting with the escorts in the top of the map, or even even just helping to take down the units in the bottom right, maybe it would have been useful. Although maybe at the same time he was simply maneuvering it out because he saw it was so nearly dead. Who knows, guys? I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm not going to drag this one out because we are nearly wrapping up, but uh, we'll be cracking on with a few replays. I'm going to try and get one a day out for the next week or two. Uh, of course, we have the Chaos Plane beta coming out fairly soon as well, and I am working at doing guides for this, although I still... I still feel that the majority of guides that people want are going to be redundant every single time they make a patch. So I'm trying to think of the best way to do this, guys. Have yourself a great day. I'll see you next time.